Welcome everybody, my name is Chris Odo. I do work for AGS. And for those of you who don't know, AGS stands for American Grease Stick, and we have been in business since 1931. Today we're gonna to be doing a tutorial on our hydraulic flaring tool. It is a very universal tool for you with a lot of new re-engineering to make your life a little easier on the vehicle. First thing you need to do is make sure you put your pump onto the head of the tool. You wanna to make sure that the pump is screwed all the way on for the ram of the tool only goes out so far. We also made our T-bar removable. We threw a hex up here. What this is gonna do is gives you the ability to remove the T-bar and just throw a wrench on here to tighten down any of your dies. More importantly to me is that any of your brake line dies right here and right here, we have taken and removed the ridges from the inside or ferrules. Uh, what those were doing were pinching the line, scarring it. You couldn't get the fitting up against the back of the flare to get a proper seat. Uh, even though those ferrules and ridges are not there, they will still flare stainless steel poly armor, galvanized, and nickel copper line. We did uh, pin your dies. This gives them a better alignment. We added a wonderful magnet to the head. They no longer just fall on the ground. At the very end of your pump, there is also a ball bearing, and your forms are divots. What that does is holds in place and self-centers. So the re-engineering of this tool is you don't really need to see up underneath that vehicle what you're doing anymore, eliminating some of the space you used to need with some of the older versions of this tool. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do an inverted flare, which is a double inverted flare. This here is your operation zero. This is the new and best feature of the tool. It no longer matters what flare you're creating. You'll always start with that by pulling your die apart and pumping that up against there. Again, that is going to align those dies. It'll lock them in place. You no longer need your hands up underneath that vehicle. For at that point, you will now only need to take any type of line underneath that vehicle and bump. At that point, you've set the depth properly to create that flare. Once you do snug up on the material, you will get the final bite on the material after you release that OP0. Again, we'll go over all these flares. First thing we're gonna do is a quarter inch inverted flare. So I have the quarter inch OP1. You will just go until it stops. The form will seat right up against the back of the die. Then you'll have your OP2. That's your operation two. This inverts the flare for you. Again, you just pump against the material. Once the 45 hits the material, it's three to five pumps. Once it stops, don't crush. Again, you wanna create that flare and seed it while you're installing the line. And pretty much that fast, you get yourself inverted flare. Again, with this tool, it will get your bubble flares. Now, it does go all the way up to 10 millimeter for your bubble. Um, the dies will say 4.75 millimeter ISO. ISO is for your bubble. Even though you're using 3 16 line, this is the proper die to use, even though it says 4.75. Reason being is an M10 by one bubble fitting is flat on top. This gives you the flat back to seat it properly. And your form has a larger pin, so you have proper flow. Again, start with your OP0. It's as simple as that, every single time. Being a bubble foyer, you're only gonna have one punch, so you're just gonna go until it seats up against the back of the die. At that point, your flare is done. And we give you a clean consistent bubble. Next flare we're gonna create is your O-ring flare. Uh, these O-ring flares are 5 16 and 3 8 The one thing is, is they're great for is your fuel filters or inline fuel filters. Once again, 5 16 GM for O-ring. All your dies, keep in mind, are also labeled inside of here. Just in case they fall apart, you can put them back together to get it correctly. All of your forms are also etched on. So once again, we're gonna grab that OP0. Again, every time, it's the way you start your flare. Five sixteenths GM form. And pump till it stops. Pretty simple, pretty consistent. 
Now I do like to tell people sometimes you are going over the line on some of these larger flares. Uh, the form will stick on the line. If it does do that, you do not want to release these dies until you get it off. So if you release the valve and it sticks, close the valve and just start to unscrew it. You will feel it loosen and go break free. Once it breaks free, you can release the pressure, bringing your form back. And then now you have an O-ring flare. And once again, now we're gonna go into your push connects. Push connects are great, especially when you get all four of them, not just a couple. It's just three eighths connect for push connect. And we are going to create that fuel line. OP0, pull your dies apart, pump it up and align it, maybe. Bump. And get your final bite. Please also keep in mind to make sure that your pump is all the way on the head. So basically screwing it all the way up or close to all the way up. There is a ram here and it does only go out so far. It is designed that the pump is on the head completely. Um, once again, you'll just continue to pump. Just keep going, you'll feel it hit that material. Once it hits the material, push through that material. Once the form stops, it's complete. Giving you your push connects. Also keep in mind it does bevel the top edge for you. That just keeps the edges of the material from cutting the O-ring flare as you're seeding it into the quick connect. And finally, the fifth and final flare is gonna be your GM Transcooler Line Flare. This also comes with your 3 8 and half inch flare. So get you that 3 8 flare. Once again, just keep going through the material till the form seats against the die. We also have some nice little small hand tools here. We're going to go demo those. Um, the first thing I want to demo is our cutter. It's really nice, it's a ratchet cutter, it gets you the ability to be under, underneath the vehicle. We have a spring in the head and all that's gonna do is make your life just a little easier because you no longer have to tighten it down every time you go around underneath that vehicle. If you're up underneath that vehicle, you're just gonna tighten this down till it stops. Once it stops, you compress the spring. That keeps tension on the line at all times. If you are cutting a piece of galvanized or steel, yes, you will tighten it a couple more times. But at that point, you can just sit there and ratchet underneath the vehicle. Tension on the line, cutting through for you. Making your life a little easier. So, we do have a nice deburr reamer. You should deburr a cut end of a tool before you flare. It is the proper thing. Nice hardened steel. It just retracts. You can throw it in your toolbox, not chipping it, dawing it, making it last a little longer for you. Now at that point, you will just take a few little spins, removing the burr off the back end of the line for you. Also keep in mind it does the outside of the line too. So if you are using some steel to nylon compression union on a fuel line, you'll be able to clean up that outside edge, helping you with those ferrules to put them on. So. Then we have a nice little bender. This is my favorite thing in the world. There are so many people that have these large big ones. We have a nice little compact one, giving you the ability to work on that vehicle again in some of the tighter spots doing your brake lines. Uh, it's really good. We'll work with any material give you the nice tight bends that everybody's looking for without crushing, collapsing, causing flow restrictions. So say, uh, for instance, you're doing a front to rear on a GM Chevy truck, you just created it that fast, and it will go down to a 120 without crushing, collapsing, causing flow restrictions. So. And then last but not least, these are our TB ones. These are a beautiful little tool. So if you are going to be going in, it's just nice to tweak up underneath the vehicle, 3 16 and quarter inch. So both on one tool. 
If you also have that where you need that fitting very close to the flare, you can push that fitting right up against that flare. Grab on and slight small twists and people will get that nice tight little bend without crushing, collapsing, causing flow restrictions, keeping the fitting nice and tight. And we thank you for your time today um, and hope this was very educational for you. And if you need to learn more about these products or AGS, please reach out to agscompany.com. Uh, pricing availability on all these products are there for you. Thank you.